Well, let's just, uh, it's such a insane movie. Uh, what, what was, where did it all start from? What, what was the, um, the very, the catalyst that started this whole movie going? Um, that's fairly obvious. Um, Will um, wanted to do a movie in Spanish. And um, he didn't have any takers. Uh, no one in Hollywood really wanted to do it. Um, people don't like subtitled movies. Certainly studios don't like subtitled movies. And uh, I was a friend of his from Saturday Night Live, and he wanted to, um, he had me come out and run Fun Your Die. And while I was out there, he said, hey, I've got this idea that no one wants to do. Would you like to do it? And I said, no. And then I started driving around. I mean, my biggest concern was that, and, I, and I'm hoping that we pulled it off, and maybe you can tell me if we did or not, or, you know, we'll find out if we did. But my biggest concern is that I didn't want to make a, a sort of a one-note parody um, film. And so I was kind of afraid of it, like everyone else was. And um, I started driving around LA, and then I started to think of all the kind of, you know, because Will likes to take chances, all the kind of crazy things that I could do with the movie that, you know, just would be fun to do. And I came back, I wrote the script, I sent it to him. Uh, we basically have done that draft. We had a little punch up here. Matt and I added a few things as we went along. Getting Matt was a sort of part of the essential part of the process. You know, I knew almost when I was done with the script that I sent it to him right away. He hadn't, you know, and, and Will wanted to use him and I wanted to use him. So it was like a little, uh, uh, you know. Um, triangle of love? Triangle of love, a little jack off um, session. <laughs> well, you guys go way back, right, to Santa Live? You could answer that. Uh, yeah, we shared an office at, at Saturday Night Live and, um, you know, we had similar sensibilities. We, we uh, both collect records, so we kind of turned it into a, an our version of The Swamp, and we would actually bootleg beer from Lauren's office, and so it kind of became a de facto hangout, and that kind of worked in spring from there. It's fantastic. And it's not fantastic. No, it's fantastic. <laughs> Um, it is, because it is, when I remember, I work with these guys as well, and I remember when it, the movie was coming together, and it was the three of you, it was very much, you had a very clear vision of what you wanted to do. It, you know, that, that, that's the thing, it's like, uh, Will is a guy who likes to take risk and do something a little odd occasionally from here and there, you know, he, he, he really was the first big celebrity to do something online, you know, and he really was... He takes these little risks every once in a while. This was a risk, I think, and Matt and I come from a tradition. We wrote a lot of the weirder stuff on Saturday Night Live, I think, and we, we like taking, you know, I'm not going to say that these are crazy risks, but we just like sort of pushing um, comedy a little in different directions. And um, so this was a really fun project for all of us because we really, there were no restraints on this. Were there any pictures that you looked at that were very influential in making this movie? or? I mean, we kind of put everything in the blender. I mean, we, you know, I think the jumping off point, and Andrew will say this afterwards, was, uh, you know, 60s and 70s Mexican cinema, and then uh, some telenovela stuff, but really that was kind of the, how to sell it. And then, uh, you know, Peck and Pop films, classic Hollywood, the indoor outdoor sets, um, you know, not to get too pretentious, but the films of Alejandro, Yoda Wire Skeeper, some of the trip out stuff. Uh, yeah, and we try to see if this is the last one we ever do, which is quite likely. Uh, no, is uh, to, to let's get it all up on the screen and see if we can have some fun and, and drain it of all laughter. <laughs> well, the music also is so wonderful in it. And you wrote some of the music and... Well, Andrew, because uh, you, you wrote most of the songs and our friends at Beacon Street Studios uh, in Venice uh, did, did all the actual music, but... Matt and I really are, you know, there's a, we made a, a soundtrack for this movie um, that is now it won't be on some vinyl, and I think that was our greatest accomplishment. We were such record collectors that this was more. We love, you know, all that. The movie was an excuse so we could put out the soundtrack on right. vinyl. Right. right. <laughs> um, but uh, so that was that was you know a fun part of the music. We both love music and all the stuff we did together. On red vinyl too. <laughs> and the uh, the three of you have such you and Will, uh, Matt, Andrew, and Will have such a clear vision. What was it like? actually sharing this with the other actors, Gael and Diego and Pedro, were they all Genesis? Were they, did, was it convincing about what kind of movie this was or were they on board 100%? I, there was a little convincing, but, 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 but Gael and Diego are such smart you know, actors and, and really intelligent. They're, they're, they're good comedians too. They knew not to, uh, to overplay it. They thought, you know, they, I think a lot of people getting in a movie with Will Ferrell would want to be ham it up and be yucky. They, 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 they understood what we were going for, which was a little weird, and a little offbeat. And I think, I think they were, I really think that they got it right away. Pedro, the, the older actor um, um, in the God rest his soul. God he passed soul. away, actually. Uh, um, one of the, really the great you know, actors of all time from Mexico. Um, he, uh, 
he got to the set and on the first day set told me that this is a really shitty translation. And, um, and, and he sort of wondered who wrote the movie. It was kind of making him angry. Uh, Diego, Diego kind of explained to him that uh, I had intended it to be a shitty movie. Um, and uh, and um, so uh, he came around very quickly, sort of understood and got in the vibe of it and began to sort of feel his way through it. But maybe, maybe most people got it. Of course, Nick Offerman is a smart comedian. He understood what he had to do. So, so we didn't have much trouble there. So you wrote it, you wrote it in English, and then did you translate it into, yeah, yeah. Uh, was it like intentionally bad Spanish, or was it bad Spanish? English? It was intentionally bad English, you know, I mean, I love that writing style, of, you know, a little clunky here and there, and then the translation process was a little um, fun in that sense, because the translator was like, well, you can't say that in Spanish, and then I would say, well, you don't say that in English either. <laughs> How will I not say that in Spanish? You know, like that. So, so it was a, that, was, that was a fun process. That's really good. I'd love to open up the questions to audience. Yes, you in the middle. Uh, question, was the score at all like um, inspired by kind of the Ennio Morricone slash Ennio Morricone type of score? Yeah, in fact, I think uh, our friend Hal Wilner, who uh, is an amazing, uh, he did a lot of the tribute, he did a tribute to Ennio Rota, actually, a tribute album. He kind of was the father of the tribute album. He was a friend of ours from Science Live. He produced his Lou Reed's albums. And he has actually, I think they were at NBC throwing away uh, like 15,000 of their library record albums, and so he took them all. <laughs> and they, he, you know, does, still does the music for Saturday Live when this needle drops. Um, and yeah, so it was all inspired by that, and, and obviously we had no money, so uh, he was, you know, we kind of designed, we put in all that stuff in the temp track that would have cost us $400 million. Right. But he was able to do that, but yes, all those, you, you got all those references, which was, was uh, I think the last time I you might be more Conan. Uh, Let's not tell anyone. No, no, exactly. We don't have to pay for it yet. So yes, yes. Uh, anyone? Yeah, way in the back, in the white shirt. Yeah, um, how many times did you have to stop filming so that Will could get his lines right? Well, uh, you know, it, it, we called it a, it was shot in 22 days. We call it 22 day fever dream. And uh, usually we would do, you know, I mean, uh, one or two takes or three, and, and then Will would almost be up. Well, we're done. We, 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 it was more trying. It's like once he got it, <laughs> we were moving on. Which I was going to shoot that way anyway, so it was kind of a, kind of a blessing. But. but he learned Spanish. I mean, he practices Spanish. It was it before. Before. Basically, it was phonetic. I mean, he knows a little Spanish, but he really did have to kind of just you know, rehearse the sounds of it because getting the accent was the key and he really had to try to rehearse that a lot. And yes, he he was he was the only one who would almost make us stop really and, and you know, understandably it's not his language, so we stopped. But, but the trick was too we wanted it to uh, uh, be no overdubs. So everything you see in the movie was shot with Will speaking correctly. So if he didn't get something, we would do it again. Um, we didn't want to do right. you know, we wanted that to be the trick and that to be the or, or not the trick, but you know for him to do it that way. Um, anyone else? Yes, right there. I was wondering, uh, since Will Ferrell is such an uh, improvisational comedian, was there any opportunity for improv? No. <laughs> like, remember when Rocky went southpaw? <laughs> Yeah, we tied one hand behind his back. He, no, he, I mean he, you know, I mean he's an actor, so he, acting's not just speaking. It's you know, the other stuff he did, obviously, you know, facially and, uh, and but even there it was kind of difficult because so much effort and thought was going into trying to say these words right that like if you see him rolling a cigarette, that's a fairly I know for Spanish speaking people that's not a big trick. He, it was a big trick for him to be able to roll a cigarette like playing a piano with this hand over here and maybe you know fixing a car with another. So it was it was a hard thing. Worse than yeah, yeah. I agree. But also showing an enormous amount of range at the same time in a different language. Well. Yeah, I mean, because as people know, sometimes the product, you know, the subject you're mixing around. So for him to be able to, to have to to do the, the appropriate reactions or you know uh, in Spanish was quite a feat, I and mean, he pulled it off brilliantly. Uh, it's a quiet room. <laughs> I mean, right. Right. Two songs. Were they both original, and are, will the studio plan to submit those at the end of the year? Maybe? The soundtrack's coming out, yeah. Oh, you mean as what? Uh, submit them for Academy? <laughs> uh, I hope so. I'd like to win that award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's submit those. I want just, and also just go to iTunes when they come out and buy the shit out of them, and I'll have some ASCAP on them too. So. <laughs> Don't get cynical. It's a festival crowd. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, we would, we would love that. I mean, I would love that. Yeah, right here. The glasses. I was curious if there were, if there were additional scenes or bits that you weren't able to include in the, in the final cut. 
there's about an hour of uh, uh, deleted scenes that uh, when we release the, the nine DVD box Criterion collection, uh, you can either enjoy or not enjoy. But uh, at one, I just want to talk that was kind of our favorite scene. Or not, it was just a great scene between Diego and, and Genesis after she the, the drug the car burning scene and uh, Diego slaps her. It's a really intense kind of Scarfacey kind of thing. He, he, it's a, you know, but we found that. You know, in the movie, people loved Diego, and it just kind of stopped the movie cold. Like, you couldn't really get back on his side, so we had to cut it. But uh, it, there's a lot of those scenes that, that didn't make the cut. Someone has their hand up? Yes, right there. We would love, I know that Matt and I do have a future project, and Diego would like to do it with us. It's all about windows of opportunity, but those guys are, that was, you know, we're just. You know, Will brings in talent so that, but for us it was sort of a blessing to be able to work yeah, with these the actors. Yeah, those guys are the best in the world. Yeah, really sure. We'd love to work with them again, of course. Yeah, in the back there. I know the budget was a lot smaller than what people might have thought. Uh, what, was there anything that you were limited in that you would have liked to do had you had more money? I don't think so. I mean, I actually like when there's a, a set number and you have to back into that number. I mean, obviously, when you know you're you, when you're doing shootouts and it, it, I mean, you wrote an epic movie uh, uh, it takes place in a lot of locations, and when you're doing squibs and stuff, those take uh, like a couple hours to set. And then you, when you're using guns, you have to have an hour safety meeting. There's a lot of like you know you're always fighting time, but. It's also a fun challenge to say there's only so much money. Like you know, we love miniatures and, and using those things, and so the miniature town was a, a plot, you know a budget constraint, but also a, a, we would have probably done that anyway. So uh, I, I always think it's fun to, uh, to to say, hey, look, if someone gives you 50 bucks and he says go make something, well, I got 50 bucks. Okay, how can I how can I pull this off? So. And that was that shootout that was also raining that day, if I remember. It was like a day that was like raining. Well, we were shooting the reverses, and I think it was foggy, and we shot the front, it was completely sunny. But I, I heard a story that on Braveheart, they shot all the battle scenes, I guess, in summertime uh, on the one side, and then you go to the reverse, and it was raining for like two months. And they said, fuck it, let's just shoot it with the rain. And I don't think anyone know. I don't remember that. So I don't, you know, yeah, I don't think, it, it almost was kind of a, it looked kind of cool, and we just felt like, I mean, we didn't have the luxury to stop shooting, but... Uh, we have time for two more questions. Someone... A two-parter doesn't go oh, right here, right here. Uh, when you're shooting a film like this with like a really decidedly kind of not low rent but uh, a low tech aesthetic, uh, when you're on set, how is there ever the temptation when you got a particularly hard shot or movement or thing to just say, "Eh, fuck it." The, the, where where do you draw the line between you know what's a decided gag and you know? Well, I mean, I think it's a mixture of high and low. I mean, we use the old Panavision C-series anamorphic lenses, so that, you know, it has a kind of a, a look in general, and the, the shots are composed. But then within that, if, you know, something happened, I think even on the, uh, on the calf, we didn't get it. We were going to get a live calf look different. And we just said, you know, so whenever it was shot, even better. Let's just go if, that way. If you're, a, if you're a writer, and you're watching the director waste time with one of his precious shots, and you're not going to get your script shot completely, you definitely have to say fuck it. You want it to go, but Matt would never fuck it. So we would even add more stuff. Yeah. But that's the fun part. No. I don't think we answered your question. But. I don't know that I asked one. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Um, did any of the actors help uh, contribute to the sight gags at all? Day one, uh, Diego. Uh, we shot the blue curtain scene um, as if it was a different day entirely from what we shot there. And he goes, oh, can I, uh, if I had the, you know, could I have 12 it's different a great cigarettes? Impression. I know, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be an actor too. I'll do. No, uh, and that was his idea. So he, if you look, you know, I mean, he's smoked a cigar one day, you know, and, it, and we shot that uh, with his reactions that, you know, had to do it all in one. So it was a, I think it, originally the scene was like five pages. So we wasted, burned like 10 minutes of film of just a single take of Diego doing that. And that was all Diego. And, and that happened all the time where we could, you know, they were contributing and, and uh, it was, you know, those guys were amazing, yeah. I think that's about all the time we have. Um, let's give my hand a movie open. Thank you, everybody.